Hello and welcome back. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Welcome back to this week's gun store vlog. Our question of the week this week is going to revolve around gun store safety. Working in a gun store, is it safe? Do you run the risk of an injury either by somebody breaking in or maybe a customer not being safe with firearms? Anyway, we're going to we're gonna uh, do that. We always start off by showing some of the cool inventory type stuff we get in use from our customers. If you are not interested in seeing any of that, just scroll on down to the comment section pinned to the top. I will have a comment with a timestamp to the question of the week, so you can just click on that and bypass all the inventory stuff. Anyway, if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. We're gonna jump into it now. All right, as always, I'm gonna start off with some of the interesting stuff that we've gotten in. Some people like to see the type of weird oddities that gun stores get in. This is pretty uncommon. This is a Norinco MC5D. And what this was is in the 80s, Norinco noticed that people were purchasing SKSs and converting them to take detachable AK mags. So what they did is they came out with a short run of these. This is a factory made Norinco rifle. Uh, basically what they did is they took their standard 56 SKS and they modified it by putting it in a Monte Carlo stock, which is where you get the M uh, MC. And then these actually came with a five round detachable magazine. This does not have that with it. It just has a standard double stack 30 round mag, but you got the 5D from the five round. So MC 5D Monte Carlo five round magazine. They shortened the barrel, took off the uh, bayonet lug, just kind of in essence sporterized an SKS to take detachable magazine. So these are very collectible and very uncommon. This is the first one I've ever seen in person. Here's another interesting one. Now, this is an Israeli converted S or, uh, SKS, an Israeli converted K98 Mauser. So, after World War II, Israel uh, armed itself with surplus German military weapons. So, they would have gotten the K98s, the MG 34s, actually 1919s from the United States, and they converted everything into 308. Now, this is an original BCD coded made in 1941 K98 Mauser, which was reparkerized completely and then ca uh, caliber converted to 762 by 51 NATO or 308. I know they're technically different rounds, but we'll, we'll just say 308 for some simplified terms. Uh, they put like, uh, they sanded the stocks, refinished the stocks, uh, but this would have been a factory conversion for Israel in the 1940s, late 1940s. Uh, through the early 1950s. This one is not import marked. Very uncommon, never seen one before. It's a very interesting piece, to hit, piece of history. Here's another pretty collectible firearm. This is a Remington Model 8, chambered in 35 Remington, which is the most desirable cartridge. Uh, these, typically, their, their popular use was with law enforcement. These were actually used to some extent by the French in World War I. Just a very interesting piece, to, piece of history, very iconic. Uh, jacket over the barrel. This is a, a shroud. Not much else to say about it, but they are very unique and very collectible. This is another interesting one that I had never actually seen before. This is called the Infallible. Uh, and this was one of the firearms that was kind of iconically used by Bonnie and Clyde Barrow. A, a 32 ACP has kind of cocks here in the back. Very, very weird. Uh, single stack magazine, I believe it holds six, six or seven rounds. Very uncommon, just unique, something interesting and different. It's missing a grip panel on this side. Thought I would show you guys that. All right, guys, that's basically it for the kind of unique and interesting inventory type stuff we've gotten in. I, of course, get used stuff all the time, like Glocks and M&Ps and stuff like that, but you all have seen a million of those, so I'd just like to show you the interesting and different stuff that we get in. Anyway, let's jump into the question of the week, and that is going to revolve around safety in a gun store. Are you at a high risk of anything happening to you when you work at a gun store every single day? So, in the grand scheme of things, if we, can, if we consider all occupations, I would probably say it's a medium to low level of danger or risk of anything happening to you. If there is going to be something that happens to you, it's going to happen in one of two ways. One, and probably the most common that does happen to employees and customers of gun stores is accidental discharges, people accidentally being shot by uh, people bringing in firearms where maybe it's loaded and they didn't know it and there's a negligent discharge or maybe 
uh, I've actually, there's footage of like a police officer picking up a firearm that was handed to him from a store clerk and the firearm was loaded and he shot his own finger off. You wonder why was his finger covering the muzzle anyway. Uh, and obviously the officer should have checked it prior to. Uh, but that sort of stuff happens. And typically when we talk in that regard, I will talk about our inventory and the people bringing stuff in and kind of my experience. So our inventory, just like any other gun store, that I've been to, if somebody wants to look at a firearm, the first thing we do is we take it out of the case and we clear it. That is number one. We never hand a firearm to anybody without first doing that. Um, I have never had a live round chambered in any one of my firearms that I have as inventory. It's never happened in the five years that we've been here. And I don't understand how something like that could happen, why you are chambering live ammunition into inventory. Uh, Maybe if you own or work at a gun store, maybe if that's happened to you, what are some circumstances in which live ammunition is introduced into the firearm? I don't know. Um, typically, too, I would say about 50 to 60% of the time, even after we check it and hand it over, the very first thing the customer does is they check it themselves, which I totally commend. And a lot of times people will, well, uh, apologize, but go, oh, I'm sorry, you know, I, I know you just checked it, I trust you, it's just habit. And I say, no, totally fine. I love to see that people, it's instinctually will check a firearm when it's handed to them, even if it's just been checked in front of them. If you're watching and you're new to firearms, I highly recommend you make that part of your habit. I mean, even when I'm at home and I pull a firearm out of my safe to clean it or maybe take it to the range, the very first thing I do once that firearm's in my hand is I check it. It's just it's something that should just be part of your habit. Now, that has gotten more habitual for me since I opened this store because every time I pick up a firearm, it's checked clear. Now, instances of customers bringing in firearms. So I have a few interesting stories. Um, it is relatively common that people will bring in firearms with loaded magazines. Um, it's less common that people will bring in firearms with a chambered round, although it does happen. Um, Probably the most unnerving uh, situation that I had is I had an elder uh, gentleman who had a revolver and he brought the revolver in and he said, hey, I'm uh, having issues with my revolver. I can't get the cylinder out. So, okay, well, you know, let me take a look. I open up the, uh, the case and there is a revolver with the hammer back, double single action revolver. It was a Rossi, can't remember the model, 85, I think that's a Taurus. It was a Rossi of, of some sort, undercover detective undercover light, something like that. Hammer was back uh, and I could see of course that every chamber was loaded. So what he had done is he was at the range, he loaded the cylinder, closed the cylinder, cocked the hammer and then for whatever reason decided he didn't want to shoot anymore, couldn't get the cylinder open and didn't think to just either point it down range and lightly drop the hammer if he didn't want to fire the round uh, or just uh, fire the first round and then open the cylinder and clear the rest. Anyway, so I'm in a store, I'm in a shopping center too, by the way, so we don't have a range and there's really no good place for uh, ammunition, you know, negligent discharges to take place. Uh, and I'll show you something uh, about that in a second. But anyway, yeah, so, um, what I basically told him to do is that we have a couple shooting ranges in the area. I put the gun back in the box, made sure that the box, the firearm from inside the box is pointed away, is pointed down counter away from everyone and away from my neighbors. And I said, please just take this out to your car, put it in your trunk, go to the shooting range. We have a shooting range about a 10 minute drive from us. Leave the gun in your car, go inside, tell them what I told you, that you have a loaded cylinder and the hammer is back on your double action revolver. Have them come get the firearm, take it onto their range, and then clear it. <laughs> so that was probably the most unnerving. Um, I have had, gosh, I mean, I've probably bought uh, several thousand used guns since we've been here. Uh, not too often, I would probably say I could only count on two hands where I went to clear the firearm and a live round came out. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos sort of about this topic where a lot of gun stores have like milk jugs like loaded up with ammo. 
I, unless we're in a really different area, I kind of find that hard to believe because in the five years I've been here, uh, I could probably only put like five, six, seven rounds of ammunition in that thing. Uh, and if, for those of you who don't know backtracking, a lot of uh, dealers will keep like a jar. And anytime a live round is ejected out of the gun, when they bring it in to show you, they'll pick it up and put it in the jar and say that they're keeping it. And they use it as sort of like a memento to show how many live rounds they've cleared from firearms. Um, it, this is another interesting point of conversation. If you work at or own a gun store, how often does that happen to you? Again, here, and we're in a pretty, I would say more affluent area, uh, middle, kind of high middle to low upper class socioeconomic scale. Maybe median household in incomes in this area are about 60 to 70,000. Um, anyway, so I don't know if that really has anything to do with anything, but uh, we don't really see that too often here. And I did want to go ahead and show you guys this. This sits right behind our counter and I get asked about this thing all the time. Uh, what this is, is a bullet trap. I always joke and tell people it's like a, like a tennis ball mortar and everybody always believes me, but I get asked about this more than anything. As you can see down inside, I've never had anything go off inside of there. Uh, it's kind of like a metal plate here and then there is some sort of uh, ballistic material down inside here to stop a bullet and apparently it's rated up to 50 BMG. This was $600 uh, and it is reusable only I think 10 times for lower calibers. If a 50 goes off in here it's pretty much done but um, anytime anybody brings in a firearm to me uh, I the what I do is I stick the muzzle down in here and then I check it clear so if anything were to happen like my finger were to slip or there is a slam fire or anything like that that's gonna trap the bullet not send it bouncing around the store or through our wall which again we're in a shopping center so we have neighbors to either side of us so again knock on wood I'll have to find some here um, never had anything like that happen in here and I hope it never does. So the next facet of safety and working inside a gun store is of course the risk of being robbed or held up at gunpoint uh, during the day when you are here. Now statistically that is very unlikely. Most robberies inside of gun stores happen at night when the staff is not there. Um, you have to think about it too. It would be so much easier to rob a convenience store or Gosh, probably even a bank, to be honest. I'm not trying to give anybody any ideas. But in a gun store, typically the staff and the uh, customer base are all armed. <laughs> so it kind of reminds me of that uh, Glock commercial with the uh, guy who goes in to rob a diner and it, and it has Arlie Ermey in it. And uh, it happens that there's like this police reunion or some sort of uh, benefit going on. The guy turns around and there's like 50 officers there. They're all looking at him and ready to pull their guns. I kind of get the feeling that if somebody came in a gun store with that sort of intention that it would be a sort of a similar thing. You would have at any given time maybe 10 to 15 people <laughs> who would draw on you. Uh, now I know it does happen and in our local area we have had uh, cases where a gun store, actually the same one from the vlog that I talked about last time, uh, the one that got uh, sued for a straw purchase, they got robbed in broad daylight by three people who overpowered them and they took 10 or 15 or 20 guns. I believe subsequently they were caught. Um, but yeah, they uh, the, the store owner, they hit him over the head with one of their handguns and then he was on the ground in pretty bad shape and then they, they held him at gunpoint while the other two guys eluded the store. Uh, there was also a customer in the store at the time and they had to, you know, they restrained him. So anyway, that's that's never a good scenario. Of course, we all know the very popular one, I believe it was in Georgia, where the two armed guys came into the store and like I said, the, the store owner immediately drew and killed one of them, which, you know, that's kind of how we want to see it turn out. But we also down in Southern Indiana had an issue uh, where there was a, uh, a small family run gun store, I think it was behind their house, just a small like shed type establishment. And uh, their UPS driver who made deliveries noted that the guy, it was a pretty isolated place, and that after a certain after a certain time of the day, he was there by himself, an elderly guy. So that UPS, I believe it was UPS, I don't know if it was UPS or FedEx, and I don't wanna throw either company under the bus, but it was a delivery driver then went back with a friend knowing that information and shot and killed the shop owner unfortunately who had kids and you know was married and everything um and stole several guns and they caught them like two days later so 
Uh, anyway, it doesn't happen that often, but it does happen. But I'd say the risks are pretty low. You would probably stand a higher risk of, of uh, ending up with a gun in your face. Uh, probably if you worked like in a convenience store, even a fast food restaurant or anything like that, especially at later hours, where criminals know that for the most part they are not going to meet armed opposition. It kind of goes with the mantra that uh, gun-free zones are going to be a softer target and therefore picked more frequently. Now with that goes the risk of what you sell. So obviously being a gun store selling firearms, firearms are a very lucrative and very liquid asset for people who are dealing in a criminal uh, kind of criminal enterprise. Um, and I think that that would only get worse as we get more legis like if we did uh, universal background checks, I know that that was talked about, I could see theft of gun stores going up because it would be you know, more difficult for people to like buy guns and arms lists if you're a felon or anything like that. I'm not trying to make a political point or anything, but I think that if you put those roadblocks in place, it would just cause crime to go up. We saw that with prohibition with alcohol. We've seen that with the drug war. So, I mean, you can get into a debate about that, but that's just kind of throwing that out there to think about. Personally around here, I haven't seen any threat of that. I'm a pretty good uh, reader of people and I really haven't even had any circumstances where people have come in and it's made me uh, a little bit uneasy. I think at one, at one time, I think the, the most worried I had gotten was when there were two people and it seemed like one of them kept trying to distract me. Uh, while the other person kept trying to get behind me. So I was, one of them kept wanting to look at long guns. And as I kept moving towards the long guns, the, the second person was trying to, it almost seemed like intentionally staying off to my periphery. Uh, so I had a customer there and a customer here. Customer here keeps asking to look at long guns. And what I do in that case is I turn my body outward towards the customers and I reach and grab the gun off the wall this way so I can see both. Typically, if it's light enough, I'll grab it with one arm so that this hand is down by my side arm if I need to. That's the only, that was the one time I was like, oh man, I'm about to get a gun pulled on me. But it didn't end up happening. They were, it just kind of, the circumstances felt really off, but nothing ended up happening. So that was kind of the weirdest that I've ever felt. But by and large, I've never had any issue or been worried about potentially being robbed or anything like that. And even if you are, you know, if you're in a gun store and you get robbed, in most cases, um, they're there for the firearms. They don't want to make noise or cause a commotion. They're not likely going to do anything to hurt you uh, or kill you. Uh, they're just there to, to steal your guns. And I know, again, that that's happened in cases where people have been shot and killed over firearms. But uh, by and large, in any type of armed robbery scenario, typically the victim never ends up getting shot or hurt. Anyway, I will leave you guys with that. If you own or work at a gun store, let me know some of your experiences about that with customers misusing or bringing in loaded firearms or uh, people maybe robbing you in, in daylight. So uh, I would be interested to hear some of that discourse down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that bell notification button so you can see more content like this. Anyway, guys, I will leave you with that. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV and I will see you next time.